everybody. We're with my friend Adam here, and he's going to be profiling his Shadal deck that he's built. So without further ado, I'll let him take over. Shadal's too broke. Let's go. Okay. Okay, we got two Falco. Falco is like the kind of the leader of the pack. I mean, he's a tuner. He's a flip effect. He has broken. Just abuse the hell out of him. That's the, how do you, that's how you basically win the game so much. Two Beast, he's your draw power. Uh, three is Cloggy because you never want to draw into him. You just want to send him to the graveyard as quick as possible and then abuse him with Falco. Uh, two Dragon, that's your MST. So you have, uh, basically in this deck, uh, there's four MSTs because I, you know, just have to have something. And he's also a Compulse when you set him. And he's a 19 beater, so that's really nice to have. But we got Squamata, who is, uh, you're a Foolish Burial. So you send him to the grave uh, very early game and you send other stuff just to thin the deck out as quickly as possible. Three Hedgehog, he's the only Shadow you run three of because you have to get that, uh, Fusion spell. If you don't get the fusion spell, you're gonna lose. That's just how the, the game works. I mean, there are games you don't have to have it, but most of the time you do. Uh, two Armageddon Knight. I didn't like uh, the Curry Bandit build, and uh, so I just kind of like I like him better only because he's on summon. I might take him down to one, but he's doing fine right now too. And again, there's uh, two mathematicians as well, so I have a total of seven foolish burials in this deck just to get it running. And this deck is fast. Like this deck does not slow down. It is completely just go ham, go yolo. Just don't don't stop. Just make it make it happen. Uh, two Valor for obvious reasons. This is my personal light tech was Rainbow Karibo because he's a hand trap as well as a graveyard trap if you're going to get OTK'd and he's a light target for uh, Construct. So get him out of the deck uh, to summon your uh, light fusion but at the same time he's a hand trap. So I'm going to try and tech in some faders because he's not doing as well as I thought he would but he's doing great for what I put him in for. It's just I'm, I tend to get uh, attacked a little bit too much but I uh, haven't lost too much yet so that's not too bad but still my tech in some faders. Uh, one Birdman, he opens up a lot of plays. I like to... Um, have Armageddon Knight on board, and then I put Armageddon Knight back in my hand next turn, special him, normal Armageddon Knight again, to send more stuff to the graveyard, and then Synchro for, I don't know, the level 7 or something. It just, also, I use it to tribute set for Beast, which is just funny. If you have a Beast in hand, it's just dead. Troll Mole, because you can, why not? Uh, he basically made it so I didn't have to run Compulse anymore, and I can kind of control when I need him, and uh, he's just good to have in your hand. Uh, two Cephalons. Asian Eyes ran three of him, and this is kind of an adaptation of Asian Eyes' build. This is my how I kind of adapted it to my own personal preferences. But Cephalon is so good. I win more games with him than the extra deck, which is what I'm saying. You don't have to have the fusion necessarily to win, but it's really good to just get it as quickly as possible so you can sit on mid rash and stun your opponent. But late game, he just ends it. When he comes on board, it's a game over. Like they can't, they just can't do anything. And it's, it's so big, and he summons Construct and summons himself, and just an incredible card. Then uh, BLS, because Light and Darks, you have to run because he's like the best card ever. Uh, three Shadow Fusions. I was trying to look for every excuse to run two just because they're so expensive, but um, <laughs> but you gotta have three. You gotta summon the fusions, and when the new fusions come out next uh, set, they're gonna be even more expensive. So just definitely get those set while you can. Uh, two MSTs, like I said, there's a total of four of them in the deck. Two dragons and two MSTs. You just gotta have them just in case because traps will just end you. Uh, Lure of Darkness because run darks, and you don't want to you don't want to run duality and stuff like that in this deck. And I always hated Upstart Goblin. I never liked that card. So I tried my best to just avoid using Upstart Goblin as much as possible. Uh, Foolish Burial, like I said, there's seven of them. So definitely a uh, keeper. One Soul Charge. This kind of opens up your plays. If you have all the shadows in the graveyard and you just can't go for game, that's your out. Because you can make all your uh, extra deck and stuff like that and just wait till next turn. And then one Super Poly. I side in uh, two more. But at one, it's fine. Because you never know what your opponent's going to use. But I end up actually using this for my field only and not using their monsters, which is kind of like, oh, scrub. But at the same time, if it gets my plays off, it gets my plays off. And it sends a shadow to the graveyard, so that's nice. Uh, two Sinister Shadow Games. This card is... Uh, it's good when it works, but typically you only use the first effect. So, actually, I take it back. It's not seven Foolish Barrels, it's nine. Because these are also Foolish Barrels. You send a shadow to the graveyard, and then you flip any shadows you have. But typically, you won't sit on a set shadow, except for maybe a Falco or a Beast or something. 
So it's really good if it works properly, but it's not great like late game. It's a horrible card late game. It's a terrible dead draw. Uh, we got two breakthrough skills. Just a, it's a really good card in this format. Stops everything. My friend recommended this tech. It was trap stun. Because this deck just loses to traps. It just loses completely. Especially deep prisons and stuff like that, because everybody's teching them in now because they're afraid of Midrash or Winda in TCG, I guess. So Trap Stun was a really good uh, option, and it's really worked out. I've won too many games with this card now. That is true. And then one Bottomless, because Bottomless is just a really good card. And I don't run Capulse because I run the Grand Mole, so I don't really worry too much about it. And also, because my monsters are so big and they just kill special summon monsters regardless, I'm not too worried about them getting a big field. For the extra deck, uh, we got two Construct. Like I said, this build doesn't abuse the fusions as much as other Shadow builds because I like to rely on my main deck as well. So this is just two's fine. I mean, she's broken as hell. When she's summoned, she's a foolish burial too. And then when she's sent to the graveyard, you get a Shadow Fusion spell just like uh, Midrash does. But she also, when she attacks a special summon monster, it's just instant kill. So that's why I'm, I don't really worry about Compulse because my opponent can summon all he wants, but I'm just going to just kill it. And then a uh, two midrash or window. Uh, I might bring it up to three, but twos work out just fine. You know, again, I don't use my extra deck as much as I should because I don't have to. But she's just broken as hell. Uh, once she is resolved on board, neither player can special summon more than once. She can't be killed by card effects, but it's only your opponent's card effects. So torrential tribute will still kill her if you activate it. And then um, again, you get a fusion spell back if she dies. But it's just sent to the graveyard. So even if you like exes with her, it still works. Uh, one one oh one. Because you can run right fours. Yep. Uh, the Rage Quitter. Uh, Lavalva Chain, because sending shadows to graveyards even just really good. Uh, Vokasaurus, because there are some times where I sit on Midrash and I sit on uh, Beast, and I don't need either of them. Because Beast is already resolved, and Midrash is like, like I'm playing Bujins or something. Like, what am I going to do that? I just want to go for game, summon him, destroy something, and then go into him. So, just another really good tech. Uh, and Armadis, because you can make uh, fives. Goyo, you make sixes. Arcanite Magician, because all oh, spellcasters and he can make sevens and he's just really broken. Beals, because Beals is broken. Leo, we're just climbing the levels. Yeah, that's and what I was going to say. Star Eater is the last one. Because uh, if you sit on a Falco and a couple, just a couple shadows, it's really easy to make Star Eater. I make him a lot more often than people think I will. Just because you spam the board so quickly just off of one card. It's just one card makes the deck go so quickly. So you're just sitting on a bunch of dead little weak guys that you don't need. So just go into Star Eater and just beat your opponent to death. I understand. So it's just it's a different take on the shadows. It still works like the shadows do, but I don't see a reason because Midrash is broken. It, it, that's a true statement. Midrash is broken, but she's not so broken that you can just sit on her all the time. Because she has only has she has low attack. Exactly. Yeah. So they just attack into her, and then then what are you gonna do? Well, then you you're out of Midrash, and I might pull it up to three, but it's worked fine at two. I have not come into a situation where I needed another Midrash. You know, I, I just have the one, and when I have an open. I just summon a bunch of big guys and just kill them all in one shot. So, I mean, it's a different take, but it works really well. It's really fast. It dumps the deck immediately. I can probably get the Cephalon set up. So you gotta have 10 monsters at least in the graveyard. I could probably have that in three turns, which is not that bad, especially because I have so many Foolish Burials. And then summon... Uh, Summon uh, Construct from the graveyard or summon himself from the graveyard if you yeah. want to fuse with them. There's just so many plays you can do, and the deck is just so consistent. The only time you don't have a play is if you open with zero shadows. If you don't have a single shadow in your hand, then you have a dead hand and you'll probably lose that game. But if you open with just about any of them, then you'll have something to do. Okay. So definitely a good deck and definitely check it out. But it's expensive and I'm broke because of it. Yeah, you're broke now and you're actually you're in debt. Like how much now? Uh, I think like, and it's not much, it's like 25 Bucks, okay. But still. Well, thank you very much, Adam Man. And until next time, take care, have fun dueling, and good luck dueling. Take care, everybody.